Welcome to our annual Kix Model United Nations. I am Mr Peter, Principal of Khartoum International Community School, Sudan. Our mission is to empower students in a changing world and to build a better Sudan. And of course, that's more needed than ever right now. This Kix MUN conference is an opportunity to both empower you and build a better world, locally and globally. This year's theme, which is recovering from a global crisis, a renewed focus on societal progression, is not just topical, it emphatically and comprehensively represents the most important set of challenges facing human society in the last two million years and is on a global scale. Local solutions won't be enough. We need global sustained action and coordination. How do we recover from this pandemic? How do we not only recover, which implies getting back to where we were, but then maybe where we were wasn't such a great place anyway, but how do we recover better? A few governments around the world have now started using the phrase build back better, BBB. It has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? But what could it mean in practice? So let's try and define better. Better education for everyone. Better housing. Better quantity, quality and more sustainable food production. Better action on climate change. Actually, any action on climate change would be good. Better protection from climate change. So the mitigation of, of climate change effects, such as fire and flood protection. Better security and safety for all countries. So leading to less mass migration, which is another plague on the world right now. Better jobs. Better healthcare and hospitals. If the pandemic's taught us anything, it's that health can guide an awful lot of other actions. Better governments and governance. Better protection of fundamental human rights and that of minorities. Better protection of freedom of thought and freedom of action. Delegate, your job over the next few days is to walk a mile in the shoes of governments. Debate these massive global issues and challenges and try to answer the question, how do we build back better? Good luck and have fun. Delegates, directors, distinguished guests. Welcome to the 16th annual Kix Model United Nations Conference. My name is Nim Kahin and I am the Secretary General for Kix Men 16. We are beyond honored and excited to be able to host such a unique experience. As Mr. Peter has mentioned, this year's theme is recovering from a global crisis, a renewed focus on societal progression. We had originally intended for this theme to be a reference to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, since the military coup that took place in October, the theme has begun to take on multiple meanings. Many of us have been more personally subjected to the same feelings of despair that overtook the world in 2020. Regardless of which crisis we are referring to though, we are being forced to grapple with many of the same questions. How do we retain hope? How do we continue to move forward even when the UN has estimated that two decades of progress have been unraveled in the span of short, a few short months? I may not have the answers to these questions, but I hope that as you strive to answer them through your debates, delegates, you'll remember that the effort is worth it. While recovery comes with no guarantees, it is in the spirit of resilience that we continue to push for development anyway. Thank you and good luck. Secretary General Reem Hisham, Principal Peter Round, dear students, dear teachers, it's a great pleasure to speak to you at these 16th KICS, MUN KICS Model United Nations Conference. I'm glad to see that the Model United Nations is a central part of the culture of this school. 
There is no better time to start learning the complexities of the crisis we face today and the tools to address them than at your age. You and I, we are in different positions, but in both cases, unique and profoundly difficult ones, living here in Sudan during an ongoing political crisis. The United Nations and many others are actively working to address this crisis. You, you are seeing the devastating consequences of the situation on the lives and the livelihoods of civilians, with the youth of this great country paying the ultimate price. You also will get to see the expectations placed in the and on the United Nations in such a crisis and the tools and instruments that the various organs of the United Nations can employ. I'm certain that this conference will further enhance your understanding of what our toolbox is. One of the tools that the UN Security Council has in exercising its primary responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security is the deployment of UN political missions such as UNITAMS, the UN Integrated Transitional Assistance Mission in Sudan, which I lead. These missions have a political mandate, which involves preventive diplomacy and other activities such as advice, technical support, reporting and advocacy to help prevent and resolve conflict and to support complex political transitions. All this in coordination with national actors and with the UN development and humanitarian entities which we have on the ground. On the challenges, one of the challenges we face, and I think it's very relevant for the model United Nations, one of the challenges we face is a lack of understanding by some segments of the public of the limitations of our mandate. Among other things, there are misplaced expectations that a UN mission could employ or could involve a Chapter 7 mandate, that it has or could assume executive functions, that it could order the authorities to do or not to do certain things, or that it even could get UN troops into the country. None of these, none of these is within my mandate or is within the mandate of any political mission of the United Nations. The only institution that could change our mandate is, as you know, the Security Council. Here in Sudan, we continue to use all the tools that we have at our disposal, primarily, primarily for the political purposes of my mission, my so-called good offices. This is basically diplomacy, dialogue, consultations, and helping others to talk, ideally to one another, indirectly or directly. Just two weeks ago, I've launched a UN-facilitated intra-Sudanese political process, which is aimed at supporting Sudanese stakeholders on agreeing on a way out of the current political crisis and on a sustainable path forward towards democracy and peace. The United Nations is non-partisan, i.e. we do not support one or the other party to a conflict. But we are not neutral with regard to the values of the United Nations. Peace, human rights, democracy. And I also work with a clear mandate from the Security Council which mandates UNITAMS to support a transition towards peace and democracy in Sudan. Good offices also means that we, the United Nations, talk to everybody. You cannot resolve any conflict by ignoring those who are pursuing it. Instead, the best way to pursue peace is through dialogue. As the late Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annan, once said, and I quote, without this dialogue taking place every day among all nations, within and between civilizations, cultures and groups, no peace can be lasting. 
and no prosperity can be secure. I believe this is especially true for this country, for Sudan. When, when the UN can use its role as a convener and a facilitator, solutions to the conflict can only be sustainable if they are nationally and locally owned. As Secretary General Antonio Guterres has recently said, and I quote again, the Secretary General of the UN has no power. We can influence, I can persuade, I can mediate, but I have no power, end of quote, except I would add the power of our word, the power of reason. The ongoing political crisis in Sudan, like many other conflicts, takes place amid a worsening socio-economic situation, increased insecurity and violence, a global climate crisis, and the domestic impacts of a global pandemic, which is indeed, as I understand, the theme of this year's KICS Model United Nations Conference. The so United Nations has a role in responding to these multifaceted crises in support of governments which bear ultimate responsibility to address them. One of the efforts the United Nations has been making is strongly advocating for vaccine equity and sustainable recovery, both. Vaccine equality, equity and sustainable recovery are necessary not only to end the pandemic, but also to prevent the deepening of inequalities, deterioration of the economy, and in turn, more social unrest and more violence. Before I end this short address, let me say that I am particularly pleased to see that the Secretary General of this conference is a woman. We continue to strive for gender equality in the world, and I encourage you, I encourage you all to ensure the meaningful participation of women and girls in this conference, including in leadership positions and decision-making processes. And this is not only in recognition of the disproportionate impacts women and girls face in today's crisis, but also with regard to their primary role in achieving sustainable peace and democracy as well as development. Let me conclude by wishing you all the success, all the success possible as you begin your conference. This conference is a chance for you to explore solutions, solutions to complex problems which even world leaders and the United Nations are grappling with. And it's also an opportunity for you all to advance your personal growth and to push yourselves to develop key skills required in this field, in our field. I'm optimistic for a better future in your hands. Once again, my best wishes for a successful conference. We at UNITAMS, we would be glad to hear from you about any results of your deliberations. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Amin Abdul Azim, and I'm beyond honored to serve as the Deputy Secretary General of this year's Kicks Model United Nations. As the world suffers from a global pandemic, we in Sudan went through other unique and rather accentuating experiences. From getting freed from the shackles of a 30-year-old dictatorship to using our voice in the face of gunfire. And if we were to tell these stories to an outsider, it would seem like nothing more than a fairy tale. Yet, we have learned many important lessons from these experiences. And I believe the most important of them all is seeing what can be achieved when people put their minds together to accomplish a common goal. We have seen the power of unity. We have seen the power of teamwork and ultimately, ultimately the power of humanity. Here I am, a proud Sudani, and here we are, the youth of an ever-changing world, ready to mirror the Sudanese revolution's ideals through Model United Nations, ready to collaborate in finding new ways to build progressive societies. And once we've done that, we can truly call ourselves the leaders of tomorrow. Welcome everyone to this year's Model United Nations. My name is Andrew Lewis, and it is my privilege to uphold the responsibility of Deputy Secretary General in my sixth and sadly last Kixman conference. 
This year and the past couple of years have been exceptional in terms of the immense adversities and challenges that families, individuals and communities have had to face from all over the globe. The barrage of ramifications caused by COVID have quickly spiraled into a global calamity that have managed to illuminate vast disparities between the nations of the world. It has impeded our progression in society from an economic, social and environmental standpoint. And so it is therefore our, our role and our obligation as the ones who will combat these setbacks to construct effective, but more importantly, sustainable solutions that echo the mandate of the United Nations. Whilst online, we hope that the substance in terms of quality of debate and resolutions which Kixman produces and is continually produced for 16 years now will stay robustly intact and will even set a new standard. I'd like to congratulate all delegates for their continued dedication and commitment during this journey. And I hope that all of you have an enlightening and enjoyable conference. Thank you. Moving this year's Kixman online was not an easy decision, nor ideal, but the right thing to do given our uniquely challenging circumstances. A lot of hard work has been done to make sure we are prepared and we are hoping that our conference will still be as successful as ever. We are optimistic that the experience will be equally as rich and rewarding as a face-to-face -face version and we are really excited to get going. Adaptability and flexibility are two very appropriate personal qualities which parallel this year's theme, so we hope you keep those in mind during this online conference. Kixman would never be possible without the huge behind the scenes effort of a dedicated team of organizers who have been working tire tirelessly since the beginning of last semester to ensure this goes as smoothly as possible. So we would like to thank everyone who's been a part of that. Ladies, gentlemen, and distinguished guests, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected economies globally, exacerbated poverty, worsened livelihoods, and produced food crises. Less economically developed countries are the center of this all, as they are often hit worse by pandemics because of their state of development. As such, the Economic and Social Council aims to counter these effects, primarily through its mandate, which is to, to promote higher standards of living, full employment, and economic and social progress. The first topic ECOSOC will be discussing in this year's Kixman Conference is enhancing the coordination of emergency humanitarian aid in the face of a global pandemic, in which delegates will be debating draft resolutions that tackle the various challenges imposed by COVID-19. The second topic, Corporate Social Responsibility and LEDCs, will focus on the economic and social implications of the relocation of transnational corporations. Delegates will discuss possible policy implementations to counter the issues that arise within this topic. As the president of, the, of ECOSOC, I would like to wish all councils and delegates a fruitful and lively debate, and I look forward to the next few days. During this year's Kicks One Council, the ICJ will be discussing the issues of the Philippines versus China, in which the Philippines accused China of illegally entering and acting within the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines within the South China Sea. Our other topic is Iran versus the United States of America, with the case looking at the USA's categorization um, of Iran as a terrorist state. Um, and as this categorization has caused sanctions that severely impact the Iranian economy and its largest export product, oil. We chose these topics because solving them is extremely important for each state's development with the resources present in the South China Sea um, and the economy of Iran. I wish all the participants a successful court case and all the delegates a successful and fruitful debate. Ladies and gentlemen, the past couple of years have been especially rough, with many conflicts arising around the world on top of a virus that's been running rife. The Security Council's mandate is to ensure international peace and security, which is exactly what we'll be doing at this year's conference. Our first topic is concerning the Afghanistan war, which has been ongoing since 2003, plagued with endless bloodshed, destruction, and the displacement of millions of people. The Taliban have recently overthrown the Afghan government placing the people of Afghanistan under the rule of their iron fist, as well as turning the country into a terrorist haven. The Persian Gulf crisis is an equally pressing issue, concerning the heightened military tension between the Islamic Republic of Iran and the United States of America. 
friction between these two countries goes as far back as 1979, but only recently has the threat of war become a real issue, with Iran's nuclear program bring, being at the center of it all. Delegates, it is your duty to come up with resolutions that will help put an end to these conflicts, and I wish you all a fruitful and lively debate. The World Health Assembly is known as the highest health policy setting body. Our Council's first topic is something we've all been very familiar with recently, and that is the COVID-19 pandemic. This pandemic was, and still is, the greatest health crisis to occur, and has been occupying the WHO's agenda for the past two years. The main focus of this topic is on the present and the future, particularly our current response to the pandemic and how to move forward from it. With newly discovered variants and ones likely to continue to appear, the situation is not becoming any easier to control, and therefore the danger on society is not vanishing, but rather about to have another outburst. Our second topic tackles the dangers of chemical incidents. Public health has a major role in preventing the occurrences of chemical incidents and minimizing their negative impacts on both the exposed population and the environment should they occur. It is a governmental responsibility to ensure a certain level of safety to its citizens. Therefore, policies on chemical incidents and their prevention, detection, response and recovery should be developed. I encourage all delegates to take advantage of this opportunity to expand your horizons and I'm very optimistic about this year's Kixman Conference. I officially declare the 16th annual Khathoum International Community School Model United Nations Conference now open. Sometimes I lay under the moon I thank God I'm breathing